Former conservative MP Kenny Chu says Beijing operated a disinformation campaign against him during the 2021 federal election. The Globe and Mail reported earlier this month, citing a national security source, that Chu was targeted in retaliation for his criticisms of China. The Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, David Morrison, was pressed about the alleged campaign against Chu during his testimony today. We were aware of... um what I think the rapid response mechanism called activity or unusual activity, but we were advised by the rapid response mechanism that that um, it, it was not possible, and they and they did um, read everything in Chinese, that it was not possible to attribute that to uh, necessarily to non-Canadian sources non-Canadian citizen sources or to state-sponsored sources. If you accuse um, somebody with, with evidence that uh, you know he's being subjected to foreign interference, you're being a racist. And, and somehow it's related to Chinese. It's important to, to point out that what I proposed in the Foreign Influence uh, Registry Act, we didn't even mention the country by name. We leave it to the uh, Privy Council office, uh, the, the bureaucrats to define uh, who and which countries that are subjected to do this. So it, it has to be, it should be nonpartisan, uh, country agnostic, and definitely race agnostic. But unfortunately, our current prime minister doesn't seem to be capable of doing that. One of the things we've seen, unfortunately, over the past years is a rise um, in uh, anti-Asian racism linked to the pandemic uh, and concerns being raised uh, or arisen uh, around uh, people's loyalties. Drea Humphrey here, and whether or not the Trudeau's handpicked repertoire gives us the public inquiry we deserve, it will not stop Canadians from wanting to get to the bottom of the claims of election interference in our last two elections by China. And today I bring you a sit-down report with the former MP from the Steveson Richmond East riding. His name is Kenny Chu. The last time I brought you an interview with Mr. Chu, it was because he was one of the first to be blowing the whistle on this matter. He had compelling evidence to suggest that he was in fact targeted during the 2021 election with a disinformation campaign that was using the popular social media site called WeChat, which is frequented by many Chinese Canadians and also many constituents in his writing. We're going to talk to him about what he thinks now that more information has come out to suggest that China has interfered in our elections, what he thinks Canada should do about it, and how the Chinese Canadian community has been affected by these allegations. But first, if you want to take action towards this, open up another device and go to firedong.com. You see there is more information out there to suggest that communist China actually handpicked this liberal MP. And if you want accountability, go there at firedong.com and sign our petition. Here is Mr. Chu. All right, so joining us now is former Conservative MP Kenny Chu. Thanks for being on Rebel News again. Well, thank you for having me, Drea. Good to see you again. Yeah, we're in the same spot. Last time we were here, you were letting the world know some of the information you had that indicated that you were targeted in the 2021 election. Now, I've already updated the viewers a little bit more about what that is, and I'll link the former report in the description. But I guess my first question to you is, what were you thinking after you blew the whistle on this when you heard the information that was leaked from CSIS? What was going through your mind? Uh, a mixture of um, pleasant surprise, but at the same time, an overwhelming sadness. Because um, I'm, I'm surprised, I'm positively surprised, I'm pleasantly surprised because finally there, there's something that corrobor corroborate with what I've been saying. Um, the community and other people may say, you know, why are you being such a sore loser? Um, but, you know, it's not about Kenny Chu. It's about, you know, strangely, I actually agree with the Prime Minister that uh, our country the institution of democracy is the foundation of our, our country, and it needs to be protected. Where he, he and I are uh, differ from each other is that he's satisfied with the outcome of the election, you know, hasn't been changed. 
But my perspective is there are 338 little elections around across the country. It is important to say that in each and every one of the 338, Canadians decide solely for themselves and there has to be no foreign interference. And according to what sees as a whistleblower, that's not the case in 2021 nor in 2019. Right. And you're right. We need that insurance as Canadians. And you say you side with the prime minister on some things. What about the uh, rapporteur who's been picked, David Johnston? What do you make of that? I, I think David Johnston, is, it's a very capable and suitable candidate as, as, a, as the governor general. And he's done a great job. But the fact that he's a good governor general doesn't necessarily mean that he is good and a suitable candidate for everything. In this case, we need somebody who is beyond reproach. And, uh, you know, and unfortunately, um, there has been questions about his, uh, um, you know, independence or co potential uh, questionable linkage to the Trudeau family and Trudeau Foundation. And even these questions are are indication that it's not it's not good not good for Canadians but also not fair for Mr. Johnson and and unfortunately prime minister can can source all other potential uh, eminent uh, Canadians to to fill the role but he had picked somebody who served on the Trudeau Foundation board and also a family personal family friend now, I've known the governor general since I was a kid from visiting him and his daughters when he was principal at McGill, to spending time on the ice or the slopes at their uh, family home in the Laurentians. And I've always known him to be a man of strength, intelligence, and compassion. And they just hide behind, oh, Stephen Harper also appointed him as Governor General. Again, just because he's a good Governor General doesn't mean that he's a good candidate for the repertoire. So one of the things, or maybe the main reason you believe that you were targeted in the previous election was because of a bill that you put forward. It was a bill calling for transparency in this area, really. If there was foreign agents, you wanted them to just declare what their activities were or else there would be consequences. Tell us what's going on with that bill. Is there any initiative like that continuing with the Conservatives or any other MPs that you're aware of? Audrey, let me tell you a little secret to you and also the audience of Rebel. Um, in 2020, when I first became an MP, 2019, my staff and I uh, had conducted a study and we want to um, bring, bring in a, a registry similar to what the U.S. has, but we decided to settle on the Australians model. So we pretty much used them as a template and uh, you know, customize it to the Canadian situations. So our, our Foreign in Influence Registry Act, the one that I propose, mimics very closely with what the uh, Australian has. And from my perspective, it's the perfect balance, just like in Australia, um, honoring and respecting people's uh, freedom and rights in practicing you know, uh, activities, political activity, engaging with uh, foreign government and also government officials. Um, so my registry says, you know, do that, continue to do that. We're not going to stop you. It's just that instead of doing it under the table, bring it up, bring it up on top of the table and expose it to the sun. And, and that's the, as we know, sunlight is the best disinfectant of all things. Um, what, we, what we want to do is to at least introduce the transparency that's what the, the act was called in Australia, um, and strike a balance. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's been misconstrued as anti-Chinese, um, you know, that, that I, I hate Chinese, that uh, I am an anti-Asian racist, and all these name callings uh, have, been, have been thrown around uh, during the election 2021. Well, that was the main part of the disinformation swirling about you, that your bill would, I guess, target all Chinese Canadians instead of just foreign agents. But speaking of uh, labels being thrown around, even media that wanted answers from Trudeau, his response was indicating that that in itself is a, a level of hate against Asians. What did, were your thoughts when you heard that? Well, if he cares so much to protect um 
member of parliament, parliamentarians of a uh, certain race, you know, in this case, Han Dong and Chinese. Well, what about Alice Wong? What about Kenny Chu? Uh, these are also Canadian of Chinese descent. And how come the prime minister did not care to share his thought in protecting us from being uh, harmed by a foreign, um, you know, regime that uh, that has obviously, according to CSIS, penetrated the uh, the Canadian society. So obviously, he's trying to shield himself, you know, from all these questions. But Drea, unfortunately, his attempt to do so. Uh, it's actually hurting the Chinese community, Chinese Canadian communities, because uh, it, 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 you know, in, implies somehow that, uh, you know, if you accuse um, somebody with, with evidence that, uh, you know, he's being subjected to foreign interference, you're being a racist. One of the things we've seen, unfortunately, over the past years is a rise um, in uh, anti-Asian racism linked to the pandemic. Uh, and concerns being raised uh, or arisen uh, around uh, people's loyalties. I want to make everyone understand fully that Han Dong uh, is an outstanding member of our team and suggestions that uh, he is uh, somehow not loyal to Canada um, should not be entertained. And, and somehow it's related to Chinese. It's important to, to point out that what I proposed in the Foreign Influence uh, Registry Act, we didn't even mention the country by name. We leave it to the uh, Privy Council office, uh, the, the bureaucrats to define uh, who and which countries that are subjected to this. So it, it has to be, it should be nonpartisan, uh, country agnostic, and definitely race agnostic. But unfortunately, our current prime minister doesn't seem to be capable of doing that. You mentioned suspicion on the Chinese Canadian community because you've warned of a backlash against the Chinese Canadian population because of this issue. What are you seeing that backlash? What, what are you seeing there? Actually, um, I see that we are in a triple whammy situation, three levels. Um, first of all, as Canadians, as I just say, we see our democracy being threatened and allegedly being compromised. So that's one thing. And on the other level, we um, as Chinese Canadians, we are particularly vulnerable. Um, and the easiest target to, um, to the Chinese uh, influence here. So that's why um, we need um, to come clean and also uh, people will need to come clean and also tell us exactly what happened so that we know who are the culprits. And thirdly, if we don't rule out those culprits, that's exactly what you're talking about. The racist backlash and the rising anti-Asian sentiments will be upon every one of us in the Chinese community and as well as for the um, Asian um, Canadian community as well. What do you make of the fact that the Deputy Minister of Foreign uh, Affairs has come out and said that there's no evidence per se to say that the disinformation campaign against you was from outside of Canada? What's your thoughts on that? Well, I don't know based on what uh, the uh, Deputy uh, Minister have actually concluded that because that's in complete contradiction to uh, the observation that uh, myself and volunteers, all the information that we gather. But more importantly, uh, throughout the last year and a half, there have been uh, studies and, and deep dive uh, into the matter by uh, non-government organizations, such as the Atlantic Council's uh, Digital Forensic Research Lab, and also McGill University teams, um, this Info Watch, all these organizations have corroborated and, and they have sourced information in the Chinese side, um, Chinese social media, to confirm that there has been a, a concerted effort in doing that. Now that with Globe and Mail uh, expose and the report on um, you know, the subject according to CISA's secret and, and high secret reports, there has been definitely uh, indication of that. Now, it's an interesting, it's, it's important to know that there are Canadians in, uh, in our country that solely relied on informations that are specific in, in their own uh, language of comfort. They're more comfortable in Chinese or, or Russians or uh, Persian. And it's, it's important that our organizations, doesn't matter whether, whether it's NC COP, RNZIRA, RCMP, CSIS, 
that they familiarize with all these communities' operations and be able to penetrate them. The deputy minister, I'm sure, you know, she, she says that with all uh, genuine uh, nature, but I'm not sure if, the, if the, she is, you know, aware of all these operations conducted um, covertly in our communities. If you haven't done so already, go to firedong.com. Demand accountability. We cannot have MPs handpicked by China. That's firedong.com. And if you appreciate the reports that we bring you at Rebel News, you can be a part of supporting us by donating what you can while you're there.